Hello, and welcome back to Marketers Take Flight. I'm your host, Lindsay Divin, and we are continuing our incredible journey through season four, where it's all about empowering you, the marketer. This season, I'm zeroing in on the themes that make a monumental impact on your personal and professional life, like mastering time management, boosting productivity, achieving work-life balance, and steering your career trajectory. In today's episode, I'm thrilled to feature another outstanding AEC marketing maverick, Michelle Hubbard. Michelle embodies what it means to strategically align career moves with personal life goals. Before she became a principal and the director of marketing for TLC Engineering Solutions, she made the bold decision to switch firms, a move driven by her desire to achieve a better balance between demanding professional life and fulfilling her family life. Join us as Michelle shares her story about this significant transition. We're going to dive into how she assessed her options, the factors that guided her decision, and how this change has affected her approach to leadership and marketing within our industry. If you've ever wondered about making a big career move for the sake of balance or to achieve a higher professional level or new professional goals, you won't want to miss Michelle's insights that she shares on today's episode. Let's dive in. Okay. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thanks for being on Marketers Take Flight podcast. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Lindsay. Yes. And so I usually start these shows, especially when I have guests on, asking you to describe how you got into the industry and your career path. But since we're talking about your career path today, um, for the majority of our story today of your being a marketing maverick, why don't you share a little bit? And I've known you, gosh, I can't even, over 10 years. A long time. <laughs> a long time. So I've seen your remarkable journey in our industry, you know, starting as a marketing coordinator and becoming a director of marketing. Can you walk us through some of the pivotal moments over your career in AEC marketing? Sure. You're too sweet, Lindsay. Um, So I graduated in 07, uh, December of 07, uh, from the University of Central Florida with my degree in marketing. Not really the best time to be looking for a job. So I was very thankful to land a position working for a small business that did corporate events in Central Florida. Uh, Pretty demanding schedule. Pay was not amazing, but I was happy to be employed. And it was my first proposal experience because I was putting proposals together for clients uh, for different events. Uh, After a few months, I was promoted, which I took over another position. And the person whose position I replaced went to work as a marketing coordinator for Hensel Phelps. So in the AEC industry, a few months later, they were hiring and reached out to me. Um, She knew I would probably be pretty unhappy in my current role and thought it would be good. I'd be a good addition for their marketing team. So I quickly like polished my resume and sent it over, interviewed, and I was hired as marketing coordinator at Hensel Phelps in their Southeast division. Um, And it was a total of three of us in the department, myself, her, and our manager, and at the time, I was also given the opportunity to join SMPS, which mm. helped my career trajectory immensely. Um, and I began to build my professional growth network. So a year or so later, my supervisor left the firm, and so did the marketing coordinator shortly after. So it was a pretty pivotal point in my career. I was terrified to be the last one standing. And eventually, I had a new supervisor who was put in place, who came from operations, which can be a challenge as they don't really understand fully how to do marketing, but now they're in charge of managing marketing. And we also had hired a new team member. So over time, I kind of grew in this role. I took was promoted to proposal manager. So I was responsible for seeing um, large, complex design build type projects and for also developing the marketing team members for doing a lot of their training and so forth. Um, and even though I was really busy doing all of that, I I really wanted to make sure that I found time for professional development outside of my firm. I was actively involved with SNPS and a handful of other organizations and mentoring groups, which were really important. 
um, to my career growth. I tried to be intentional to grow my personal network and develop friendships that really helped me when I needed advice or just a sounding board. I know you know that very well. <laughs> they provided me, you know, the support and motivated me to achieve the goals that I, I wanted to set forth. And this network has been invaluable in my career, and I owe a lot of my success for the support that uh, my friends really have provided me. Over time at Hensel Phelps, I continued to grow in my role. I added business development as well as uh, strategy. So I developed the first uh, marketing strategic plan for our district, and then that template was eventually uh, adopted uh, company-wide. So it was kind of the first uh, to do it. So that was something I was pretty proud of. Um, yeah. As my role kind of morphed from working on proposals to actually leading the pursuits more in a technical standpoint. So I was responsible for putting together the teams and the teaming arrangements and reviewing the contracts and identifying risk and um, developing the win strategies and really leading the large pursuit meetings for both not only our internal staff that was on the project, but also uh, any partners that we had. So it was a pretty, pretty nice career trajectory within the firm. My supervisor was a project executive, um, and he really supported me in my professional development. And with this help and the support of my vice president at the time, I was also the first marketing person to be invited to sit in our uh, the weekly executive meetings, which was another pivotal point in my career. Having a seat at the table and being seen as value a valuable contributor to the direction of the district was like a huge win for my team and for marketing in general, just in an operations dominant firm. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was really intimidating. I was the youngest person in the room and I was the only female with a lot of alphas. So yeah. uh, this required me to be comfortable being uncomfortable a lot. <laughs> uh, but it was kind of interesting to understand what executive leadership is concerned about the challenges that they face, you know, decisions they need to make and, and how to really run a company. Eventually through my network, I was approached about considering making a change. Uh, as the current marketing director at TLC was about to be re retiring and that position was about to be available, I was very encouraged by my network to pursue it. At this point, I pretty much achieved all of the goals that I wanted to with Hensel Phelps, other than the title that maybe was associated with the work I was doing. At the time, their marketing career path was limited, and there would always be an operations person at the top of the hierarchy in marketing. That's just kind of how it was. I wanted so badly to change that, but after 12 years of pushing, I was I was kind of defeated. Yeah, I yeah, it was you know it's it's hard, and so I was very supported within my district, but a corporation of more than 3,500 employees, change can really be challenging. And I was very transparent with my supervisor and my VP, and they supported me through the decision-making process, you know, to make the change because they wanted me to be happy and, and really wanted uh, me to make the best decision for myself. Uh, obviously, I took the leap of faith and made the big move, and, and it did work out. Um, and here I am today as a principal in the firm and, and the director of marketing, and I'm still being supported by an amazing team, and I still work for a great firm. So it, it did work out, but it was still yeah. scary. Yeah. I love it. I love, you know, I've known you for a long time, but I didn't even know all everything. I mean, I know you kicked ass at, at <laughs> Hensel Phelps, but I didn't know everything that entailed like the first marketing strategy, strategic plan, and then being rolled out, used as a template for the firm and then being at the exec meetings. I mean, you really broke some barriers there. So Kudos to you. Congratulations. Sometimes we <laughs> we don't know that we've achieved it until we've looked back and like you're preparing for a podcast to talk about it. Oh, a hundred percent. I was like, oh man, wow. <laughs> this is kind of cool. So we are celebrating you. Fun. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so let's talk about this moment in time when it came to you, came to this decision about making a career. You had been at the firm, your previous firm for 12 years, which is like forever in our industry, right? <laughs> like who stays at a firm for 12 years? You know, you already talked a little bit about like the current marketing director or director of marketing was going to mm -hmm. retire at TLC and there was some people encouraging you, but what were the main factors that influenced your decision to make the move over to TLC? 
So it was the hardest decision, one of the hardest decisions I've I've ever had to make. I loved my team at Hansel Phelps. I grew up there. You know, I was a kid when I started for the most part, you know, and I had both of my children while I was working there. I had achieved a lot of professional and per- personal milestones as a part of that firm. And I genuinely believed I would retire at Hansel Phelps. Um, so when I was approached for the new position, it was funny because I had just completed a company-wide project that I had spearheaded to celebrate employee longevity with the firm. So I had kind of taken the initiative to work with a vendor to design these like miniature cranes that featured like milestone beams, which were going to be awarded to all employees across the entire company in honor of 15 plus years of service. And I was currently at 12 years with Hensel Phelps. And so when I did leave, uh, not getting my crane honestly did cross my mind because I put a lot of effort into that project. Yeah. Um, but you know, I do consider that another way I left a little small lasting touch on Hensel Phelps, but, uh, as I mentioned, my leadership really supported me. And when I was offered the position at TLC, I was, I was really transparent. I also told Michael Sheeran, who's my boss, um, and the CEO at TLC that I needed time to make that decision. And he was super understanding and, uh, gave me the time that I needed and which made it even harder because he was so nice. <laughs> We work better with deadlines, right? Uh, yeah, we <laughs> it was so nice. Uh, it is awesome. And I'm very lucky to have him as my my boss now. But um, I was really nervous to become part of corporate versus an operating unit. So some of the items that I would now be like responsible for, social media, the website, were things I tried to avoid in my previous role. So the imposter syndrome definitely set in. And I questioned how I would even be successful in this role. Um, I think the tipping point for me was that I was going to have a bigger seat at the table. I was going to be able to have more impact on the direction overall of the firm. Also, doer sellers have a lot of respect and value what marketing brings to the table. I knew that I would be assuming a position that held a lot of respect within the firm. I wasn't going to have to create that. I just had to maintain it and do a good job and not screw up. So Mm -hmm. I it made it a little bit of an easier decision for me. Um, as well, I knew the firm really well. TLC has a great reputation. I had a lot of friends within the firm that had longevity with the company. You know, people like working there, which is really important. I am definitely a person of longevity, 12 years with one firm. I plan to be at TLC for a while. Um, so that was that was very important to me as the culture of the firm that I would be making that transition to. It was going to take a lot for me to leave the position I had. Um, but positions like this don't open up that often. And so you know, when they do, you just kind of have to go for it. There were definitely times over the first year that I questioned the decision I made. I, it was a lot to take in. I was drinking from a fire hose and I had a lot to learn. Um, but I kept telling myself like, Michelle, you can do anything for two years. <laughs> two years is not mm-hmm. that long, just anything for two years. And everybody was so welcoming and awesome with TLC. It was, I, I left HP on very good terms. So really, as the second year went in, like it got a lot easier. I knew what to expect and anticipate with the company. It's just, you don't know what you don't know. So Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of got in a groove. I grew my team. I gained confidence to really be successful. And and now I've been able to like, you know, take on more. And and I feel like I've got very, be very comfortable in my role. But it, it is a big change. So let's shift gears a little bit. So we've been talking about your career this whole time. But season, this new season of my podcast is all about balancing everything and (laughs) and focusing on the person. And the person and the marketer isn't just a worker. We have lives outside of work, whether it's family or communities or, um, you know, other obligations. So how have you successfully managed to balance this demanding career and be very successful at it? but I know you have a very fulfilling family life. What strategies or mindset or things that you've developed over the years to help you? I hate the word balance, but how to manage it all. Like you're managing it all. Um, So what, what have you deployed? I I agree. Balance isn't really the best word. Um, But the best advice that I can give is to get help. I'm blessed. I have a very supportive husband who's a firefighter paramedic. So he has a really funky schedule. Uh, So he's on 24 hours, but off for 48. So I'm a single mom once every three days, but I have a lot of help the other two. So for us, it was finding that balance so that we're both pulling the same load. Um, When my daughter was born, evenings were 
or a challenge when he was on shift, the best thing I did was hire a high schooler to come over for two hours each night that he worked to help me with the kids. Uh, They call it Mm -hmm. like a mother's helper. Uh, She was just a second set of hands that allowed me to take a second to just empty the dishwasher or decompress for a few minutes after I got home from work and feel okay about doing that. Um, It was just something really small that made those days a little bit easier. So my advice is to find ways that you can offload some of your to-do items and not to feel guilty about doing it. Uh, It doesn't make you less of a mother because you have something else, you know, you, you have someone else doing some of the traditional wife or motherly duties. I structure my personal life the same way that I do my professional life. I, I try to prioritize what's most important that I can accomplish and find areas that can be delegated. I live my life through like lists and calendar invites and reminders to help keep me on track of everything going on. So I don't drop the ball somewhere. I, When people see my calendar, they often say it gives them anxiety uh, because it's packed and color coded with like all these details. But for me, it has the opposite effect. It allows me to have everything organized in one place and it allows me to clear my mental load and not have to think about the small things so I can focus on what I'm actually doing, um, knowing that each task is accounted for and and I can just review my calendar and, and know where I need to be and what I need to do. Um, that's how I've kind of managed how I may try to manage my life. I love, can I just get a mother's helper, even though my kids are older now? Like, can <laughs> I just get somebody to come over and do the dishes? It's worth it. It's so worth I've it. always joked that like, I wanted a house intern. You know how like you can get interns at work? I, I want to find an intern that just wants to manage a house. And oh, that just, would be great. Wouldn't that be a great idea? Like even so. just for the summers, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I, but you bring up a good thing. A couple of points I do want to like hit home is asking for help, realizing that you can't do it all yourself Mm -hmm. and that, and having a supportive partner. So whether that's like a husband or a wife or a friend or a brother or a sister, like somebody, if you have children, especially to help you manage the load. So there was that asking for help, calendaring everything. Like my calendar looks the same as yours probably um, because if it's not on my schedule, I am not going to do it. And Mm -hmm. so, and I just have one calendar and I manage everything on my work calendar and then invite whoever needs to be involved in it. Like whether it's my husband or if it's like the kids, dentist or doctor's appointments, I invite them because they mm-hmm. both have emails now and calendars. So they know because I was trying to keep multiple calendars and nobody was looking at them except me. So I just put everything on my work calendar. And so everybody knows when our dentist appointments are and our doctor's mm-hmm. appointments are and when Abby's, you know, sports are. So <laughs> absolutely. Even travel time. Like I put travel yes. time on there too, because sometimes you look at it and you're like, oh, I have time. And no, it takes 45 minutes each way to get there. So It's better to have it on there than to, you know, not. Well, especially if you use like scheduling links Mm -hmm. and people, they can't see what's on your calendar, but they just see, you know, that something's blocked out at two, Mm -hmm. but you really need to leave at 115 to get there. You need to block that out. So Mm -hmm. now if you, um, as you were explaining in earlier, when you were explaining your career journey that you were very involved or are very involved in leaders in organizations like SMPS. And Mm -hmm. I know because you're in my chapter Mm -hmm. that you are also president. You've taken, you've not are just a member, but you've taken on leadership roles, organizations like SMPS and other organizations And so how do you think by serving in these roles, these have influenced either your approach to marketing and your approach, and then how you show up as a leader in your day-to-day work? So I think that serving in leadership positions early in my career has really accelerated its trajectory. Um, As a chapter president of SMPS, you're essentially leading a small business. You're exposed to items that that are not typically part of a marketing professional's role, such as accounting. I learned how to use QuickBooks. You know, that was not something in my job description, but, you know, you learn it. Um, You learn how to lead a room, how to manage conflict. Um, If you if you can manage a group of volunteers, then managing a team within your firm will be much easier. Uh, You know, public speaking is part of the role when you're the face of an organization. I was terrified of opening up our programs, having 200 people stare at me. 
I was so nervous and I still don't enjoy it, but I learned how to do it. You know, growing is never comfortable, but you'll survive and and everybody does. Being seen as an outside leader elevates you within your firm. It provides you with skills that will transform you um, and how, and it will transform how you lead a team. I, overall, I, I'm a better marketer because I've been able to learn from so many of my colleagues within various boards that I've served on. And it's opened up my mind to different perspectives and helped me gain kind of a better overall understanding of the industry in its whole, um, as well as various markets um, that I may not work in. So I definitely attribute the involvement I've had in the successes that I've had in my career. And you can always find time or make the time uh, to to get a little involved. And, you know, when you have those opportunities, you know, take them, especially early in your career when you have maybe a little less outside responsibility. For those folks in the AEC industry that are contemplating a major career change, similar to what you went through, either for professional reasons or family reasons or other personal reasons, what advice would you give based on your own experience making this change? I would say don't allow fear to rule your decision. If that's the only reason that you're staying, then you need to make the change. Um, it's okay to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. That's to how you're going to grow. You know, it'll be okay. And to believe in yourself and that you will accomplish anything you put your mind to. And just don't be afraid. I love that. I love that advice. I love that you said that if if fear is the only reason for not making the change, then you should just make it. But it, all other signs are pointing to make it, except mm-hmm. fear, then to make it. So I love I love that piece of advice. Okay, before I let you go today, I w- would like to see if you are okay with answering my rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so question number one is, what is your number one piece of advice to marketers who are new to the AEC industry? I would say be a sponge to take every learning opportunity given to gain a better understanding of our industry and your firm. Uh, If you're not given opportunities, then create your own. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Question two, what has been your favorite or most memorable win? So there's been a lot, but I would say back in 2011, 2012, The economy was rough. Uh, We needed backlog. And the largest project in Central Florida at the time was the new APM complex at the Orlando International Airport. So this was a huge Qualls-based must-win pursuit for us at the time, and it was mine to lead. I was also pregnant with my first child, so I had a lot going on. Uh, The final submission, I mean, we worked hours on this proposal and days and weeks. Um, It filled a three-inch binder. And of course, Goa requires 12 copies. So it was a lot oh of production. Um, so we went in to the, we were shortlisted. We were ranked number one going into the interview. Uh, for the interview, we just, we had to go all out. We had to get creative. Um, so we had a really detailed animation video of the APM that we were going to put in our presentation. So I found a place that we could shoot video on a green screen so that the animators could take the video footage of the actual project team and put it into the final animation video. Um, so it was it was kind of cool. I got to storyboard, you know, creating this video and, and directing our team members during the shoot. And we had extras and I was actually an extra in the video. I have me and my suit and my little rolly suitcase walking by pretending to look at things and uh, <laughs> a much younger version of me. Um, so, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. And then I remember during the interview having to stand straight in the middle of the boardroom um, between if you've ever been in the, the Goa boardroom at the Orlando International Airport, there are screens on both sides. I had to stand through the entire interview running the slide deck for my team, super pregnant. I think I was like six or seven months pregnant. And I was so nervous that everything had to be perfect. Um, oh, and I decided to use Prezi for the first time as well for this interview. Oh, so fun. I'm not sure what I was thinking. <laughs> Um, so as the interview concluded, the last slide was the video playing. So you see these passengers get on the train, like live people, me being one of them. So the selection committee kind of recognized that. 
And then you see the train pull off. And then as it pulls into the next station, the doors open and the project team that's standing in front of the selection committee walks off the APM in the video um, in the same order that they're standing. And so it was so impactful and Goa, the selection committee, absolutely loved it. I had members of the selection committee that told me that it was the best presentation they'd ever been a part of. And, and they were personally asking me questions about Prezi and the video as I'm trying to like collect my stuff and get ready to leave while the next team's coming in. So I've never had a selection committee as the marketer, you know, want to talk to me. So yeah. that was, that was really, really cool. And I was super proud of that, that project. Yeah. yeah. And this was back when like you said, you had to find a place to that you could film in front of a green screen. Mm -hmm. So this was back before all the filters and all the stuff where we could just shoot it on our phone now. So listeners, oh, yeah. you've got to realize that this was over 10 years ago. That, yeah. Like we, this was ancient times. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I know it's so much easier now, but yes, that, yeah. was, that was like revolutionary back then. Yeah, that's, what, that's why I wanted to point that out. It was like... Now you could probably throw that into some AI and create it mm -hmm. all. And back then it was like, you had to physically go somewhere and like record it and you know, all that stuff. Yes. So, and um, for those of also who don't know what APM is, it's an automated people mover. So it's the little trains that take you from the terminal to the gates. Um, and they're at multiple um, airports, not just Orlando. So just wanted to throw that out there. And just in case you were wondering what APM was. And then last question for today, what are you excited about? So I'm pretty excited about the future. I mean, professionally, we're doing Vision 30 planning at TLC, and it's kind of amazing to be part of crafting the next five years of the firm and kind of how limitless the, the opportunities are. Personally, I'm looking forward to this weekend, my son's soccer tournament on his new team. Um, last year, he worked really hard and he was promoted to the next level. So I absolutely love just cheering him on and wearing the team shirt and like watching him kill it on the field. And my daughter, she just made a swim team. So she's really fast in the water. And those swim meets are definitely not as exciting as soccer matches. I do look forward to cheering poolside as I'm sweating in the Florida heat, um, watching her go. And um, it's just amazing to kind of watch my kids become the people they are and to be able to be present for most of it. And mm -hmm. I just can't wait to continue to go on adventures with my family and continue to explore. It only gets better. I'll just mm -hmm. tell you that. As they get into high school and they you see them fulfill their goals, it only gets better. <laughs> so you have a lot to look forward to. All right. Well, that's it for us today. So thank you so much, Michelle, for coming on and sh and being open to share your story with us um, because it is a big change. And a lot of times people just only talk to their friends about it, but you're talking <laughs> to our whole audience. You have the whole, a new friend audience now with Marketer Stake Flight. So thank you. Thank you for having me. What an inspiring journey we've unpacked today with Michelle. As we reflect on the conversation, it's clear that Michelle's path is not just a story of career success, but also one of strategic and thoughtful life choices. Michelle celebrated incredible achievements at her previous firm, from writing the first strategic marketing plan that was then used as a blueprint across the other business units, to breaking barriers as the youngest professional, the only marketer, and the only woman in weekly executive meetings. Her contributions set a high standard in the industry and paved a way for many who will follow her. However, despite these accomplishments, Michelle recognized a ceiling for marketing professionals at her previous firm where only operations roles were represented at the executive level. This realization was a pivotal factor in her decision to seek new horizons, specifically when a new opportunity presented itself to her. She wanted a place where her professional aspirations wouldn't be bounded by these traditional norms or traditional limits that she experienced at her previous firm. Also, she has somewhat balanced, even though we said we hate the word balance, but she has a successful family life along with a very ambitious career. And so some tips she shared was the importance of support systems. Um, sh she specifically mentioned her husband, who is an active partner in managing home responsibilities. 
And when we got off the recording, she also mentioned her mom also helps out with managing some of the kids' responsibilities. Um, she also mentioned hiring help when needed, specifically uh, a teenager in the neighborhood to help with those nighttime routines, especially when her husband is working on shift as a firefighter. Her approach to putting everything on her calendar to manage her responsibilities shows, you know, all of the these are very practical strategies and items that really help maintain, quote unquote, you can see my air quotes, balance. If you found Michelle's story as enlightening and and as inspiring as I did, I encourage you to rate, review, and most importantly, share this episode. Let's spread the word so more marketing mavericks can listen and get inspired by the incredible journeys of professionals just like Michelle. So thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Marketers Take Flight. Every challenge is an opportunity to redefine our paths and ensure our professional strides don't come at the expense of our personal happiness. Remember, achieving your goals isn't accidental. It's crafted with intention. I'll see you in the next episode where we continue to design our success together. (laughs) 